you know black folks basically remember to, to keep an idea of getting some people to Geiger counters and check the radiation in your snow or moisture in your area okay remember you go to my channel you can click on my link here you can actually click on that picture okay you click on this and it'll take you to my channel and that'll take you to my channel of my new videos and this is my channel that's not going to go away or be in a court somewhere and uh there you go and you got my links here you can click on here and get to my other my channel where the new videos are at and my archives are here because basically all the contract is rock solid infinite pretty much because then they have to they'll have to do things to other people too uh in mass quantities and then they'd be looking at class action lawsuit too so contracts a contract and they're locked into it so i'm not locked into it because it was basically just to be able to yep so to keep the legalities in an argument in court and that's all court is, is an argument but when you got fact i got a rock solid contract with the idea that the original channel will stay up and this channel will stay up and off we go to showing you some more actual facts and data and then i'll show you actually factually that any one of these will work for a link to getting over to this link where the new videos are at and there's not a video showed up right here recently and i've got it basically you're supposed to be my featured channel so I'll double check on that. Maybe we have a glitch. Fine, YouTube folks. seems to have and a lot of glitches lately. At so anyway, they should have never messed with their anyway. So we'll see who wins the internet wars of being able to put up uh, free speech videos whenever you want without any altercation. So we got free speech in this country, and it's going to stand forever, and also our gun rights. And we'll, every right in the Constitution is going to stand, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go off, go off to space and see what actually factually is going on. We got a comment that we found in some footage that you'll see because the video don't have it uploaded yet. But we'll upload this here, and what we're going to get it into, we're going to pop into 400%. You'll have to watch that video before this one to realize what. Now remember, I keep my featured video at the window there, so. You'll have the fresh when you, videos. You always have to go down and look at the fresh videos because I keep, you know, what's most important at the time to. And th this is more than likely not Vesta, uh, because of the magnetical. Because you have to realize that Vesta is smaller than the Moon, and so it shouldn't have a magnetical. That, and then as you can see, the CME action that hits that planet. We'll just sit here and we'll move over to a little bit to more to the right. It wouldn't matter how big I get that. You're going to see, you can see it at this this size here that that CME hits that planet. It's electrical. It's electrical magnification, blink, blink. And when I get smaller in certain sizes, you'll be able to see the electrical blink, blink across the sky from this footage there. And you got Mercury there. The sun's off to the right. If anybody's new, this is the sun that's doing all this electrical. Now remember, this is basically a resolution where you can see the luminosity in space, okay? And yes, the light curvature that comes off the sun, but also the actual electrical, magnetical, the, the, it's atomic energy, okay, light curvature, and it's light speed, so when you see this stuff go across the sky, now, you may have already picked it out, because I'm going to show you, and I'm going to try to get it and follow it with my cursor in there, because you see, I can't, when I put my pointer, you, you can go after that object, and all I do is I take my pointer and I don't know because you don't see the yellow until it comes out on video okay so our objects there and we're gonna go up in size and what's cool about it is we get the clock and the time and everything like that and we'll actually even probably try to give an estimate of how fast per second or minute that it's uh, miles per hour that that comet is moving out and I'll go up real fast and give you the size of the Sun now the Sun I mean the Earth, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize about that because this is not the Sun, this is Earth doing its electrical, its atmosphere, CME reactive flare, the basically a, the electrical static connection, you're seeing the static connection, this is basically electrical that you're seeing, it's the electrical static buildup of Earth and it's basically our rotation, our spin, yes, it's all electric like an electric motor, okay. So we put off our static 
that we have from our rotation, that, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we'd be in big trouble if we ever quit rotating, okay? Certain planets, certain things in, in see, the moon doesn't rotate, okay? So it's magnetically clung and caught in Earth's magnetic electrical, magnetic gravitational pull, okay? Dry gravitational pull, too, okay? And then, yes, all we have, everybody always knows, high tide, full moon, we get more, much more gravitational pull. We just, it's connected with the gravitational, Earth's own gravitational pull, and then the water takes a lot of weight and distributes with our, and everything is a motor, just like uh, a watch that would not have electric power. That's right, a auto wind watch, the motion of your hand that winds the watch, okay? Like a fine Swiss movement, okay? There you go, and you have have Earth. Even if we didn't have it, we would possibly have a little bit of rotation until we would come to a dead stop. Okay, but as long as we have this electric connection with the sun, that you can see this electric connection here of the CME coming off the sun. Okay, and then we're going to go back down and study our comet that we caught. That I don't. That I'll have to probably go take. We're going to have some time in the future to well, we're not going to say it in this video what comet we think that this is but we're going to get bigger so we're going to go to 999 and we don't i don't think we're going to end up i've i went with the original speed of the video in here and you can see it right there okay so at 999 it should be able to point and it'll start it's because it basically goes through the 24 hour period and there it goes so if you're not seeing it that's what it, we're seeing there now what I'll do is I'm going to take the zoom out real fast, and I won't be able to point, but we will be able to zoom. Okay, I took the zoom out, and I was able to keep up with it because I would lock onto it with my eyesight, and my perception is pretty fast. So I slow it down here, and you can see it tumbling up above the one. And I think I got it slowed down enough that you'll be able to follow it with my cursor here. As you see, and what the most important that it keeps on going, okay, and I'll even catch up with it. It's up here, okay. We're just gonna stay here, and because I got mesmerized with, I was locked on it with my perception. I got a very fast perception, very fast, okay. So we're gonna keep it here, and bam, right there as it comes through these stars here, and then you can follow it on up, and then I'm gonna go out. We'll get a and we'll just sit here for a minute and you'll be able to see as it comes through the clock here you'll see the clock going and then you keep on seeing it and I'm going to look at the time frame and right there so that's about 12 about the 1200 hour basically noon and we'll see it just keep it at the same speed and write it when it's going to when it comes up to 12 you're going to see it coming up and it's going to hit the stars up here I mean at least electrically make a static you know, everything will try to statically, it's basically strumming the static, basically Van Allen belts, because basically Van Allen belts are electrical magnetical belts that are all over space, but the main ones that we know to be Van Allen belts are the static cling like of a balloon. If you take a huge balloon, the hugest balloon you could ever imagine or get a hold of on Earth, like a, you know, and static cling it, rub it, a rubber one, and make a static cling how you can make a static cling on a balloon and then take a tiny balloon and then that's earth and you build up static on each end and that's what the sun has the sun has the the nuclear fusion static buildup that keeps the rotation static the kinetic energy of earth in its rotation from whatever it formed after the big bang and so forth and so on on its spin like when you throw a baseball through the air okay now my pointer's just been sitting there but you can see that comet, especially when it hits the 1200 hour. And I'll point at it this time when it comes through. And you can see it right here. Now I'll keep my cursor pretty much where it'll end up coming up by again. Because it's going to come through these stars. You see the satellite moves, so these stars kind of move over a little bit. So here it comes. Now I'm above, and here comes the comet. and it goes through those stars so that's some good footage of it I'll try to 
get out bigger too and get a good look at it. And here I'm at 400 too. And what I do is I kind of take everything out so that when you, the CME doesn't catch your eye, your eyes, and you can see it coming up above the one here. Because once you start seeing all the action of the CME and everything that so much electrical activity going on with the CME coming across, you kind of lose perception of it, seeing where it's coming at, and it comes out just above the one. And then see, I can't see the the yellow cursor as it goes up through here. And I just leave it at this speed and basically you watch and it'll come up again as it just starts to come above the one. And starts moving off and then it does a bling with those stars right there. And then it keeps moving up. And then I can move up the screen a little bit and you'll see what I'm talking about is like when I have it at that size, apologize about that fast move there. The CME will start to take your eyes off it and it's still the same period of time and everything like that. And then you can see it move up above the one and start going and I've got it at a good size here where I think I should be able to no problem keep my cursor on it. And then we go back to the beginning, go down, look down. I don't have my cursor moved down but down just above the one and then it'll come up and meet my cursor and my yellow. Because see I can't see the yellow when I'm sitting here taping. I just see my cursor my pointer and then bam bam it's there so what I'll do is I'll keep my cursor there and within the yellow and as long as I don't move it the comet's going to come up and it's going to basically in that dark area that where the cursor's at right now there comes the comet to it and there's the comet in the cursor and now moving away from the cursor so it is a big comet and basically a falling star. This is just basically falling out not too long ago. But with physics what we know of is like how long has it been falling like that through the infinite size of space too, you see? And that's not, it's really highly doubtful that that's in, uh, I mean it's coming through our solar system, it glanced our solar system. But, uh, and that is our solar system because as you'll see the CME action will show you that that's the speed of light and CME action does come out to there. You see? The CME action coming out to the space through that dark area. See? There's the CME action coming through. So, uh, I haven't moved my cursor at all and there is the comet again at the cursor and then it just goes above the cursor. So, I started to re. Uh, it's a good thing I basically edited this a little bit because I started. I went and looked. Well, hold it. Am I get? Is it looking out? Because I took the magnifier out, and it's it just I had uh, some points where the shot was just magnificently good at, at catching it, but it just becomes where the idea that it's better off to stay at this resolution, and then I'll even go a custom like we'll we'll try 500. And I'll actually just go to 600, and we'll see what we end up getting. It's just good to keep on the, an eye on the num the numbers in a sense that you don't keep your eyes there because the comet's not there. It's above the numbers. It's above the one. And I guess this is pretty good at 600. You can see it tumbling, and it's slow enough where I can keep up with my cursor. And then it, it's going to be coming out again because I I just lost it. But as you see, it's going to meet up where my cursor's at as it comes across those stars. And then it's going to come to the cursor right now. And then now it moves above the cursor. So, and this is the distance basically since this time frame through the filming of it. We can catch it at this time and it's going to come up to the cursor again. It's coming through those stars where you can really kind of see it as it's moving up. And then, bam, it's at the cursor. And then it's going to restart because of the clock. You see, the footage starts back. And now, how many hours? I haven't really have paid attention yet. I've seen the 1200 hour. How many? And it's going to come back to the cursor because I haven't moved my cursor at all. And I've got the cursor kind of in a dark area. And then there you go. So we catch a falling star, a comet. So it's pretty damn big because we can keep, catch it with our eyes through all these uh, distance. That's massive distances that's out there. And this is the outer optical catch. And it's moving hella fast. So within 24 hours, because you've seen the 2329, that it does that distance. So we can kind of calibrate that su such distance by looking at, and I didn't think I was going to get the, 
but I might be able to give you a ballpark in this or the next video I'll give you how fast this thing was moving because as it goes up past the cursor there I hadn't moved the cursor at all and I'm not